Ray. Everybody knows Ray. Ray and I have been in business now for, geez, be close to 10 years-ish. Um, and it's an interesting thing, right? All jokes aside, Ray would have to be one of the best marketing copywriters in Australia, not just in, in our industry, but throughout Australia. I'll say to Ray, Ray, I've got this idea. And I ring him up at a godly hour because he's in Canada and I say, this is what we've got to do. And I give him an image or whatever and he goes, okay, I think I've got it. 24 hours later, 12 hours later, something comes back and it's like, that's what I want. He's got an ability to bring ideas to life. He's got a very good marketing brain. It's something he studied. And here's the thing. Gone are the days now where we are just salespeople. We've got to think a little bit bigger and a little bit beyond that because we're not just salespeople. We have to be salespeople and marketing experts. Would everyone agree with that? You know, we've got to be able to market ourselves to get noticed. We've got to be able to market our clients' properties to get noticed. So go on to the days of just selling, right? So this is probably the authority in Australia on property marketing and marketing and branding yourself. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to Ray Wood. Oh, a bit more of a clap, guys. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Hear me okay? Um, it's great to see everybody uh, th these couple of days, and I know it's a big couple of days. Um, uh, Hotto is leaving us. This is his last event. If I, if I run this out, I'll get emotional. <laughs> you bastard. You make me cry, mate. Yeah, love you. <laughs> It's also his birthday next weekend, so happy birthday, mate. I love you. You've been such an amazing client to me. So, thank you. Okay. Uh, without further ado, is this my flicker? Okay. I was blown away by what John Stack had to say, and there's good news and bad news around this. The bad news is that I think there's potentially a John Stack in your area lying in waiting like a sleeper cell ready to go. Okay, not to put too strong a uh, terminology around that. That's the bad news. The good news is that you've now got the opportunity to do something about it. So I would encourage you to grab hold of that address that John just delivered and study it and make notes and like Aaron said, implement. Don't get overloaded by trying to do everything at once, but just implement one thing and then the next thing and do the water bottles and just copy it. Just do what he did. It's a no-brainer, it's brilliant. Just do exactly what he did. Um, I think there's so many cool lessons there. So on the heels of that, with that in mind and that in the background of what, of what you've talked about, or what, what John spoke about, I want to talk about how you guys can take your personal branding to the next level. And, and I have studied this a lot. Aaron's right. I think about it. I wake up thinking about it. I go to bed thinking about it. I live it. I breathe it. And when you get it right, it's wonderful because it works and you, and you can connect. So what I want to do today is I want to give you some insight around how that works. But first... I want to tell you a story. And it's a story about a young boy who was being bullied at school in St. Isidore, Quebec, Canada in 1989. And this kid was being bullied by the bigger kids. They were and this kid was a bit smaller for his age. And the other kids were stealing his lunch money. They were stealing his lunch, they were stealing his clothes and beating him up. So his father did what I guess a good father would do, is he sent him to karate school. And the kid learned to be a great karate fighter. And within a very short space of time, the bullying stopped, which was a huge victory. And with the stopping of the bullying, his confidence grew. And then he started to think about other things, and it was at the time when, who's familiar with the uh, with UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championships? Yeah. 
Okay. It's got its fans and it's got its critics, okay? We're talking about the most violent sport, individual sport, I think, that there is. But he started getting into it. So by the time that this kid, who'd been bullied as an eight-year-old, was 17, he was, a, he was a black belt champion in karate. And he also learned jiu-jitsu and some other martial arts, mixed martial arts disciplines as well. Then, by the time he was 25, this is George St. Pierre, that's the kid, he'd won his first UFC World Away title. By the time he was 27, I think it was, he'd won his second. So in the years following that, for the next, up until 2013, when he retired, he, he defended his title another nine times. So it's a fairly spectacular effort. Whether that's some kind of record or not, I don't know. I don't follow the sport that close, closely. Steve could probably tell me or Aaron could tell me, but it's, uh, it's an amazing effort. But, but George, or GSP has, as he's known, he faced some, some major images, because so, some, some issues, because he had to decide, now that he'd reached the top, how does he monetize this success? How does he convert, how, how does he convert this fame and this fortune into something that can be, can be leveraged? Because he's looking for sponsorship. He's thinking about life after boxing. He knows that all boxers, the career's short-lived, right? So that was the issue that he was facing. So he started to um, think about the best ways that he could combat this. And, and that's, that's kind of an ugly image, and that's a confronting image. And I wanted to show it. I hesitated about it, but I wanted to show it because I think it was the central issue around what he was trying to do. And what he was trying to do was market himself, but he was a cage fighter. He was a, this was a violent sport. So what, what product in its right mind or what brand in its right mind is, is going to support somebody who, you know, this is, this is a knock them down, drag them out thing. If you get a blood nose or a cut eye, you stay out there, which is probably why people go, I guess. It's a bloodbath. So he had to work out how he could market himself. So he'd made some money with his titles. He was still fighting. And he had to think about life after fighting. And what he decided to do was he decided to hire... Canadian advertising agency called Sid Lee, one of the biggest advertising agencies in Canada and the US. And he started to think about how, how, how or, or they started to think about how, how they could market him. And they had these huge issues. They wanted to turn him from this cage fighter. The, the, the track they took was turning him from a cage fighter into an elite athlete, which is a huge challenge. So they had to massage, they had to work, they had to totally overhaul his brand. A company like Sid Lee had only done things like vodka and Ford cars and airlines. They'd never worked with people before. So they got a team of people together and they thought, how do we market this guy? And they do what every ad advertising agency does. They do research. If you've ever hired an advertising agency, you'll know that's one of the first, first bills you get is a huge whack for research. They do study groups and stuff. So this is the team. It's Sid Lee. Must have, all, must have all been wearing black that day. And as <laughs> everybody in advertising wears black, I think. Um, so they found out that, that GSP, or George St. Pierre, tested very well for trust, tested very well for toughness, and they also discovered that women found him sexy. Right? This, is, this is the feedback that came back. So they had to work out how do we convert all of that information into a marketing message, into a campaign? How do we, how do we leverage all of this, this research that we've done? How do we leverage these results? Now, one of the things that they decided to do was, as a group, they decided to look at uh, social media. And they skilled GSP up on how he could start to engage with his fans, right? So they were looking, before they approached any of these sponsors, they started to think about how, that they could, how they could make his profile much higher. So that's exactly what they did. And they, they showed him how to engage with people using Facebook, super important. At the time when, when this was all done, which was about 2011, I believe, he had um, one and a half million Facebook followers 
and it very, very quickly went to 3 million. You can see this is from this week. It's over, it's 4.2 million. So his Twitter fan base went from, I don't know what it was, to about 650,000. And as you can see now, it's, it's close to doubling, doubling that amount. So the effect that this had was to increase the number of approaches he started to get from sponsors, and it increased the number of sponsorship deals that he got. I think his biggest deal was, was with Under Armour. So in the time before he retired, he, he badly injured his leg. I don't know whether he broke it or not, but he bad, badly injured his leg which kind of took him out of the public eye, but he turned that lemon into lemonade. And what he did was, very, cl very cleverly, I believe, he started to engage his market in, in his recovery, and he brought them into the recovery process, which is a pretty cool thing to do. And he'd post videos and information about uh, what he was doing, and, and he was doing promotions for Under Armour. He started to drive that up. If you go to YouTube, you'll see the videos that he used to engage people. So he started to really build his brand. So that brand building exercise totally turned it around, totally turned his, his career around and his, and his fortunes around. So today he's got a net worth, according to Wikipedia, of 25 million, which is not bad for a cage fighter. Okay, and he's got ongoing sponsorships and support and he's speaking and and he does pretty much what, even what, uh, what Steve Bradbury did. Steve told me that he hired, and, and if you've had a listen to my podcast interview with Steve, I think he talks about it, he hired a, he hired a, a, he ha a stand-up comic to teach him how to tell a gag. He hired somebody that taught him, could teach him to speak uh, better, to, to massage his presentation. And as we saw yesterday, some pretty good results, don't you think? So he took the trouble to do all of this. So my argument is, the stakes are pretty big for us. Why shouldn't we look at doing the same thing? Now, you might wonder what the correlation is between Georges St. Pierre, the, the UFC champion, and real estate. Well, the last time I looked, real estate's a bit of a blood sport anyway, right? <laughs> it can get pretty violent, as we all know, and it's not for the faint-hearted. So I think there's some clear analogies there. So one of the questions that I think is important is what's going through the seller's mind. And this stat keeps coming back to me, that 80% of sellers have already made an agent decision before they even start interviewing agents. Now, even if that's not true, why wouldn't we want to just accept that it's probably close to the truth and start to work on how we can be influencing our market? What do we stand for? It's not how you look, it's how others see you. It's not what you say, it's how others hear you, hear what you're saying. And it's not so much what you believe, it's how others perceive you. So marketing essentially is a game of perception. Think about it. When Bill Clinton got caught, caught in the White House, talk about a ma the marketing coup of our lifetime, right? He overcame impeachment, then admitted what had happened, that he'd lied. And he still got off scot-free. So... I don't know that there's too many people that can do that, but talk about managing a brand, etc. That was that, that's quite an example. So, I believe your personal brand is what others say about you when you're not in the room. That's my favourite definition. That's what a personal brand is. It's not so much about your colours or the style of your logo or a branding kind of mark. It's you. And in real estate, we are the personalities and we build the relationships. And I think that. That's what stands between us and a real estate Uber or a real estate Airbnb. I seriously do, because we've got those strong bonds, right? So Locked On is all about the relationship. BA is all about building the relationship. How can we engage our market? How can we do a GSP and engage more of our people and bring more, more people into, into our sphere? So. Where's your brand now and where do you want it to be? I want to look at some specific touch points. And I've identified this 18 main, I call them touch points or contact points. You might call them marketing concepts that are within your business. And they're the typical things that we talk about when we talk about marketing in real estate. And there's a bit to do here, right? Because when you're setting up, there's a lot. Obviously, and I believe that this gets so much more important as every day goes by. 
And you know what? This isn't the future because the future's already here. And the people that are leveraging this stuff are your competitors. They're the ones you're going up against. And I like to say that tech-savvy sellers that are out there everywhere, they're all over Facebook, they're all over the media, they're everywhere. Tech-savvy sellers want a tech-savvy agent. So you need to be perceived as the tech-savvy option in your market. It doesn't matter how old you are. Did anybody have a chance to see that Gary Vaynerchuk video I posted on my blog? Watch this if you're over 50. Robert did. Anybody else? I tell you what, I, I mean, I email you guys so solidly, so, so maybe, you just, uh, maybe you're not getting it, but I'm going to give you the heads up on that interview today. Even if you're over 40, you've got to see it. Your blog, I want to talk about that in a moment. Your signs, emails, I'll be talking about those a little bit. Got some cool ideas for your Facebook page and how you can drive traffic to that. I'm going to show you a real estate Facebook page um, that generated close to 4,000 uh, followers in less than a year and, and how he did it. YouTube channel, business cards, your office, your photos. There needs to be a consistency coming through with all of these things. So your pre-listing pres and your listing presentation. Would anybody like a copy of my pre-listing presentation and, and the listing presentation? Awesome, okay. I'm going to show you how you can do that today, okay, how you, how you can get a copy of it. Your open homes, your clothes, of course your clothes. Why not? Super important. It's part of your brand. It's how you look. And I guess it goes without saying, your attitude. So, every time you communicate, what are you actually saying? What do you think you're saying and what are you, what are you actually saying? And there's an easy way around this to find out. Take a look at your website and think about it. Here's a website from a friend of mine. This is a lady called Melanie Pache, and she has an office called the Brell Team, which is in downtown Toronto. And Mel is a terrific lady. She's a lot of fun. Uh, she's also got an interview with me that I've, I've done on Top Agents Playbook, and I'll give you the address as to how you can find that in a moment. But 12 months ago, she did one thing to this web page. I actually don't like this image she's done here. She had a great photo of a team that you'll see a bit later on that was on this page. But she, did, she made one addition to this page that doubled the traffic overnight. So they sell a lot of condos in, in Toronto, obviously. Toronto is uh, uh, North America's fourth largest city. It's a big city. Um, and they sell a lot of condominiums. So a big part of the business, as you guys probably understand, in the US, they look to attract buyers as, as well as they attracting sellers, right? So there's a lot of a business from those people. But can anybody pick the um, thing that Mel added to this site that helped double traffic overnight? Yeah. Cool. They, they did this. I've forgotten, it's on the interview, but some phenomenal number of, of daily inquiries and they got back to them really quickly. Uh, and if you want to write down this site to check it out yourself and get some ideas from it, it's called getwhatyouwant.ca getwhatyouwant.ca and it's a cool site, check it out. But they really play social media very hard, they're connected because their market's connected. There's my interview with Mel. Now you guys are going to be, you've got the opportunity to get a lot of this information so topagentsplaybook.com forward slash 19 you'll be able to see my interview with Mel. As far as your website goes, I believe websites have a very short life expectancy nowadays, probably something like about, I don't know, a year or two. So if you're unsure about your website, ask a friend. And if you're a little older and you're unsure as to what your generation might think, ask somebody younger. And if they say it sucks, then change it. There's plenty of great models out there. But somebody right now is making a decision about you from their, from their phone or their tablet. They're making a decision about whether they're going to hire you or not or whether they're going to bring you in for an interview right now. So that's something that needs to be looked at. Is it mobile friendly? If it's not mobile friendly, Google have stopped ranking it as of April this year. So if you go to Google and type in mobile friendly, it'll come up with a site where you can test your site. It's worth checking out because over 50% of our traffic is mobile. 
In many areas, it's higher. I think it's higher for real estate because you know what? People are out and about, they're bringing out their phones, they're going, bang, what's going on? Let's check out this property. If it doesn't come up, they'll find an agent whose property does come up. Testimonials are super important for your website. Super important for your website. I'm going to be giving you an example of a website here shortly, hopefully. Um, you've got to make it easy for folks to get in touch. Don't make them jump through hoops and fill out lots of forms. You can even hyperlink. There's an email like email, and they can click on it, and it'll open straight in their Outlook or email, email uh, uh, app on their computer or their phone. And you know those phones where you've got, you got the tablet and you're like pinching it and you're trying to open up the field and nut? Nah, those days are gone. We've been there. If your website does that, you've got to change it because it's costing you money. And it's got to be keyword rich. If you're in Bondi, you want, to be, you, you want your site to be keyword rich with things like Bondi real estate, selling in Bondi, Bondi property, things like that. That needs to be included. As far as organic SEO goes, one of the fastest ways, does everybody know what I mean by organic SEO or search engine optimization? It's not paid search, which is, a, which is another two-day seminar altogether. This is organic, where you can create or, organic. But Google is trained, the Google crawlers and algorithms are, are, are programmed and built to look for keywords when somebody types in Bondi real estate or Wodonga real estate or Gunnedah Real Estate, or Real Estate Gunnedah, or whatever it might be. Make sure your property's coming up in that. You can, you can search it yourself, and you can test it yourself. So, one of the key important things nowadays in a great website is a great blog. And I'd like to show you guys how you can put a blog together really simply. Does anybody here do one on a regular basis? And I'm talking weekly. Seriously, it should be like a sea of hands. You've got to do this because it's going to change your business. If you've got a good website, it's going to change it. And I'll show you how. It's only 500 words. You don't need to write War and Peace. It just needs to be really quick. And it needs to be topical. So if there's an interest rate uh, fall coming up, then you want to be able to write something around that. If there's an interest rate rise coming up, or if it's just happened, maybe that's a trend. Maybe you can put something around that. Just Google your subject and it'll come up what you can write about. Don't copy and paste, just write your own stuff, then localise it to your own area. You know, Wodonga property sellers can expect. Wodonga real estate, hear those keywords, values have appreciated blah, blah, blah in the last blah, 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 whatever it might be. Just sit down and do it. If you think you're crap at writing, don't worry about it, just do it anyway. And hire somebody online who can help you massage it and make it nice. There's plenty of people out there if you want some help. There's plenty of resources out there that you can use. 500 words, okay. Let's start at the basis. Write your blog, put it together. Find a suitable image. Blogs are a lot more interesting with an image and if you can put any little copy under an image. You know when we read a newspaper, we see a, we see a, um, a, a, a photo in the newspaper we always look down under the photo. I do anyway, I'm sure you guys are the same. Who, what's the name of the person in the photo? What are they doing, etc. Because that's normally the summary for the story. That's all we need to worry about because that's the story right there. Hey Sue, how you doing? So post it to your website. You've written your blog, post it up to your website. Easy. Everybody with me so far? So you've got a cracking looking website, you've written an awesome blog about uh, I don't know, could be anything. A great coffee shop in your area, somebody that sells furniture, somebody that's styling homes, a flower shop to help property sellers um, help their property, make their property look great, a photographer in your area, post it to your website. Then write a short teaser email. Your subject line here is very important. So, in the, in the dying days of this event, I wanted to um, tell Aaron's story, right? Now, I wanted to tell a story about how his team walked out. He said, no, I can't talk about that. That's embarrassing. It's, dude, you've got to tell the story. I mean, it's just, it's, everybody wants to hear that stuff because there's many people in the room that that's happened to. There could be people in the room that it could happen to, so you've got to tell it. So, I thought and thought and thought and came up with a title. My team went AWOL. 
that had one of the best open rates that we had, right? Because that's exactly what happened. Email open rates, if it's more than one in five, it's pretty good, 20%. So don't think you can just email, your, email people and they're going to see it. It doesn't work that way. So then you can post it to your Facebook page. You can post the link and the summary to your Facebook page. And you know, I could go on and on with this reverse pyramid. Um, what about getting on the phone and calling them? Uh, hi, Mr. Taylor, it's Ray calling. Just wondering if you got my email about um, something that's coming up next month because the property market's on fire and, and now's a great time to sell. I don't know about interest rates coming up next year, etc. Whatever. It's something to talk about. Why don't people prospect on the telephone? Because they don't know what to bloody say. And who wants to say, oh, hi, Mr. Poole, just wondering if you're interested in selling. No, Ray, and you know what, mate? Don't call me again. So, keep it interesting. However, hi, Mr. Poole, it's Ray, just a, just a courtesy call. Wanted to let you know that the property around the corner has just come on the market for sale. If you'd like to check it out or whatever, let me know. Right? It's a courtesy call. I'm keeping in touch. Non-intrusive. Non We've got to think about how we do it. And I always say this. Use the word courtesy. Courtesy implies I'm doing you a favour. Listen up. Just want to do you the courtesy of... Just a courtesy call to tell you... And send it out to your whole client list. Build your email list. Focus on building your email list. Now, if you've got software that sends out a bulk email, beautiful. You can customise it. Locked On will not only send you out an email, and, and OK, others probably do this as well, but it'll tell you the open rate on your email, who looked at it. It will give you names and addresses of people, names and full details of who looked at it. Super important. So that's my little summary on writing a blog. I think from a marketing point of view, personally and for your company, starting right now, I think it's one of the most important things that you can be doing because it's going to get noticed. Somebody out there is typing Marimbula real estate right now. Right? It's a fact. Where are we coming up? How are we engaging them? Are they seeing our site and then moving on? Is our site all about us with our photos over the front of it or has it got something that's interesting that's engaging them? Maybe an invite to call or text us 24 hours. I said to Mel, 24 hours, do you get any calls? She said, we've never had a call. Never had a text at 4 a.m. But you know what? I'm awake, I'll probably answer it. If it's a 20K deal, it would have been a good thing. Right? So here's my blog. I'm a big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk. You guys know Gary? Started, uh, started winelibrary.com, took over his father's New Jersey wine company and, um, and did very, very well. He's taken it to the next level. Uh, somebody said there was a rumour he was that Glenn Twiddle was going to bring him out and speak next year, whether that's happening or not, I don't know. But if you get a chance to, get, to see Gary, he's awesome. Bit of a potty mouth. So, Hotto, I don't think you should go and see him. You'd be offended by some of those, some of those words. Just saying. Your emails and your email signature. Now, chances are your new contact, the first time they're going to hear from you will be via email. So, your email needs to look hot. And your website on your email needs to be hyperlinked. Everybody know what I mean by that? Yeah? So when you click on it, or when your cursor over it, the little finger comes up, and you can click and go straight to the email. Right? I even love phone numbers that you can just cut and paste. Or you can even, like, you can hyperlink. I, I call a lot of people automatically on Skype. I just use Skype as a phone. Straight off my computer, headset, bang, whether it's local or wherever. Easy. And if it's hyperlinked, bang. Go, feed straight into Skype, gives you an option. I mean, the technology's there, just use it. It's free. <laughs> so, your Facebook page. I couldn't talk about all of those 18 things, but I can talk about these things, because I don't have a lot of time. My buddy James Sexton from Mount Barker in South Australia is a bit of a guru, because he didn't... He tried a corporate page and they posted listings and stuff like that and sales and not too much happened. But here's what he did. He spoke to a couple of the photographers in his area and said, I'm starting a Facebook page called We Love the Adelaide Hills. If you guys want to, want to search this, you just go to Facebook and you go, We Love the Adelaide Hills. And this will come up. So he said, send me a couple of photos each week. I'll publish them on our page and I'll give you the credit. 
Now, what do we do when we see a nice photo on, fa like a beautiful photo on Facebook? We might be inclined to share it, right? So that's what Facebook's about. I believe Facebook is about, I was talking with, um, with, with somebody about this uh, today. Facebook is about personal approval. We all want to be told, we all want to be acknowledged. That's why Facebook's so successful, because we post stuff and people like it. We're liked. Everybody wants to be liked. So, that's the formula. So James 6, anybody ever been to Mount Barker in the Adelaide Hills? Beautiful part of the world. Almost as beautiful as the Margaret River Phil, yes. It is so lovely. Um, so this company posts photos. I think that's out of James, James Garden, so um, he's always posting photos of the flowers and stuff. Just some really cool photos that people are going to say, yeah, I love the Adelaide Hills too. I'm going to share that image. So, that's the, that's the website if you want to check it out. Facebook.com, we love the Adelaide Hills. And if you'd like to listen to my interview with James, you just go to topagentsplaybook.com forward slash zero three and you can check it out. Check it out on iPhone, on, on, your, on iTunes as well. While, we, while we're talking about podcasts, here's Nairi. We're going to be hearing from Nairi shortly. You listen to that there. First, our first lady in real estate, Delene. Pat's coming this afternoon. He's going to have a chat, tell us how he made 750K in his first year. You can listen to my interview with Pat. There's Mel. I said, is this the ultimate real estate website? I think it's a really good website. And Garth's already spoken. It's a great interview with Garth. Terrific guy. Mark Lands, you've already heard. Great operator. Anything about systems and software, he's the guy. He'll even take your call. He'd love to chat about it. He's passionate about it. And, of course, what would be complete without the last man standing. So you can listen to all of these interviews at Top Agents Playbook which is uh, that website there. So you'll be able to check it out. Now, here's how you can get the three killer spring prospecting scripts and eight direct mail letters. I had to put my teeth in for that. Um, and all you need to do, I will send those to you and I'll send you my direct mail power, I'll send you my pre-listing kit and I'll send you my pre-listing presentation. All you need to do is to go to iTunes, Click ratings and reviews. Give me as many stars as you can and write a little review. Everybody cool on that? If you like that stuff, I normally give this away. But this time I'm just asking for a little favour because I'm trying to boost the ratings in the podcast. You all cool with that? Okay. All right. Then send me an email. That's my email address. In fact, anybody, and I've spoken to a few people today, if you'd like to talk about what we're doing, you've got any questions, if I don't get back to you today, I'm not far away. But let me know. That's my email address. So when you've done that, send me an email and say, Ray, just finished uh, filling out the review. Please send me all of that information that you promised to send me. I will send you three Killer Spring prospecting scripts. The ultimate listing presentation, which I believe is a cracker. I believe it's the best listing presentation on the market. It's not all mine. I've patched it up from different bits and bits and pieces, but it's a cracker, it's a killer presentation. The pre-listing presentation and the listing kit that goes with it, I will send you. I'll tell you what to send and what you need to send. And I'll give you my eight best direct mail letters that you can have and hold for the rest of your days in this industry and make, I, I, I honestly don't know how much money I've made out of those letters, they're brilliant. I got the direct mail pro, and I also show you how they actually work. I show you the formula on how it all comes together. So, I'd love to send you those. All you need to do, go to iTunes, give me a review for Top Agents Playbook, do a search. If you've got any questions, you can't find it, let me know. Love to help. So, had a lot of people asking me about my book. What I did during this year is I did a program called realestateauthors.net. So you can check all of this out at realestateauthors.net. I have packaged up a book that you can be the author of. We kind of write it together, but you guys get the credit for doing it. Okay? There's quite a few people in this room who've done it, and we did about 30 copies a few months back, and it's working very, very well. Ray Rounds has gone before, but here's a flyer that Ray did um, a couple of weeks back. Ray's in Geelong. 
with Hayeswinkel Agency in Geelong in Victoria. And Ray did that, and he's had half a dozen calls already and a couple of listings just from doing that. So he's starting to, to use, that's how he's promoting, promoting his own brand. Guys, let me tell you, as somebody who's written a few books, when you write a book, where's Jeff Grist? Hey, Jeff. Jeff will agree, I'm sure. When you write a book, your credibility skyrockets. Aaron Shine has written a book. Aaron's having a ball marketing the book in his area. Right? I didn't know you were a writer. Well, yeah, yeah. It's working for him. It's all about promoting your personal brand and giving yourself credibility and making your own brand have more dominance than your competitors because we all know you're not the only agency in your area. Here's another thing that we're doing with Best Agents. This will be starting next year. Luke, are you able to flash up this uh, website? We're just going to do a, um, a little bit of... Oh, you've already got it cranking there. So this is, uh, this is the personal branding website. Now, we have tailored this to include all of those things I talked about before. We looked at the best real estate websites out there, and we actually looked at a heat map, and a heat map, H-E-A-T, is where people scroll over. It's where their mouse goes, and you get a heat map of what actually works. So, no smoke and mirrors, no magic, just research, and using the technology, we can do this. So if you can just scroll down a little bit, Luke. So, recent clients, testimonials. This is a sample site. So, these are, if we reboot this, you'll see that these figures click up, but they're the, you, you, you can control all of those. This is a WordPress site, by the way. I can't just tell you, I mean, WordPress is the most awesome thing because you get so much control. You're able to put stuff in and you can, and you, you're like, gone are the days of having to pay your, your uh, designer tens of thousands of dollars or even thousands of dollars because you can do it yourself. And you can, you can a, lot of the, a lot of the content that you need to do. With my podcast, and the company that built my podcast is Media Mojo. I'll talk about them in a sec. They built my, they built my whole topagentsplaybook.com. I just load the, the information up there. It all happens automatically. It goes to iTunes. It goes to Stitcher. It goes out there into the, into the universe and, and just starts working. It's so easy. The technology's there. That's what we're leveraging. So this is a good, solid real estate site. Just scroll up to the top again, Luke with all of the information that you should need. My area, so important. I could talk, on, I could talk for an hour on, on the things that should be included here, but I've got about eight minutes left, so I'm going to keep moving. Okay, thank you, Luke. Lovely. Okay, I want to talk about how technology saved my life. Now, you might think this is something of a sensational title, and I do have... Uh, I do have quite a, a history with creating sensational titles, but this is kind of true, and I want to walk you through it. So, I now live in Canada, and that's Canada. Um, I live in the fun part, Ontario. Somebody else called it this. So, uh, this is a stereotypical uh, map of Canada. Um, it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek, it's a bit of fun, but uh, who's been to Canada? So, it's a lot like here, isn't it? Just a bit colder? I think it's very similar. So, this is our new PM. It's Justin, former um, nightclub bodyguard and snowboarder. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> He's got a brand new cabinet, won by a la landslide last weekend. He's got a brand new cabinet full of school teachers and, and taxi drivers. I don't know what's going on. It's going to be interesting. So, about... Ten years ago, my wife and I separated and she wanted to go back to Canada with the kids. So I said, look, I don't need to sign anything, do I? You, you're coming back? And she said, oh, yeah, for sure, I'll be back. I said, oh, how long do you need? She said, a year or two. I'd like the kids to, you know, spend a bit of time with my family. We've been in Melbourne for 20 years. Liz is originally from Toronto. And uh, I said, OK, all right, you're coming back, right? She said, oh, of course. So, I waited and waited for about four years, three and a half years, probably was, and then I thought, stuff it, you know what, I'm going to go too. So, here's my kids. So, that's, uh, how do I go back here? 
Yep, that's Sam on the left, he's about 6'4". That's Tori, and that's Charlie on the right. Yeah, Sam's, oh, you know what, I tell you, having, being my height and having a, a son who's 6'4", every time I wrote out that uh, child support check, I thought about getting a little DNA test done as well, so. <laughs> Quite the challenge. So I was missing my kids like crazy not to, not to dwell on it, but uh, it was killing me. So I decided to go. It's another shot at the lake. And it was a, something of an issue, because I've got a lot of history here. A lot of family. This guy here is... That's my grandfather, Ray, and that's my great-grandfather, Harry. And that's Swan Hill, Victoria, back about 1918, I think. So... I never asked him why he didn't go to war, but that's probably a sore point. Anyway, so I've got a lot of history here. So it was with great reluctance that I did the same thing, and I didn't know kind of what I was in for. But I wanted to be with the kids, and that's what was important. So for me, Canada equaled not allowed to, to earn an income, not allowed any medical benefits, not able to get a mortgage. Visa must be renewed every six months by interview, right? The last one I did was with a woman, um, a woman who wore the, is it called the hakib? I forget what it's called. I could only see her eyes, right? I could barely understand her. And I'm there pleading for another six months, right? Crazy. Anyway, I solved it. Sorry about that. I solved it, I got married to Christine. And I didn't get married so I could stay in Canada, no. We were in love, just saying, so you know. But that's my family there, that's Chris, that's her two boys on the left, uh, Joey and Justin, and there's Charlie and Sam, and there's Tori over on the right and some, some of our friends. Now, I kicked a goal here, because not only can she f catch fish, she can clean them as well. Right? So she's a very skilled Canadian. So. This is our place, a little chalet, north of Toronto, and if you're in the neighbourhood, give me a little bit of notice, come and say hello, we'll have some fun. Winter is fun in Canada, it's cold. That's inside, that's our living room. Christine and I built this little chalet, she already had the block before we got married. So, that is another shot just of the chalet, and that's a day last year, really cold. And I've got to tell you, and I, 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 you'd be the same if I airdrop you there. After five or ten below, I can't really tell. It's just freezing. Although I know you've got to, after 20 below, you've got to make sure there's no skin exposed. So yeah, as a minus 31. So it's cold. So this one here, minus 25 with a wind chill, feels like minus 37. That's Arctic. So Hey, it snows in Queensland too, so before you Queenslanders start on me how, how lovely it is here, this, this is from last year actually. Strathware, it always snows? Stanthorpe, is it? Yeah. So we go sledding, that's my truck, that's a better shot of my truck, thing of beauty, best selling uh, vehicle in North America, and that's my dog Roxy with Chris. Gas is cheap, that's from a couple of weeks back at Costco, and we also got a cottage. So, shot of me with a cottage. I'm telling you all of this because I leveraged technology pretty much to make it work. I couldn't have done it otherwise. I probably couldn't have done it even 10 years ago. It was difficult. There's a woodpecker in the backyard. So these are a few of my favorite things. These are the things that let me what I call work from Rome. These are important. I'm gonna finish up. I'm a big fan of Skype and if you come on board as a Best Agents member, if we can't Skype, it's going to be difficult because Skype lets me share screen and share files. And yes, it's free, but it's great. I use it for all of my, all of my uh, top agents playbook interviews. It works really, really well. I talk daily with all my partners on an app on my phone called Voxer. It's terrific. It just packages it up. It's free, and we talk between ourselves. It's wonderful. It's easy. It's like I'm there. I use another little app that I love creating little graphics for. It's also free, I think, called Typerama. T-Y-P, I should have written it down. T-Y-P, 
O-R-A-M-A. -A. And here's some of the cool things you can do. You can just make your own graphics. Easy peasy. There's one I did for Shad, promoting today. That's Charlie. I use a, a, an on-screen on recording called Jing, and it's by a company called TechSmith, and the big brother is Camtasia, which is terrific. So there's just a few of my favourite things that let me communicate and let me keep in touch with everybody. Um, let's hook up on Facebook. There's my address. Uh, love to connect with you. I'm pretty much an open book, as you'll see. Uh, my time is up. You've been terrific. Safe home, everybody, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you shortly. Thank you.